The first guest we had on the show was Sebastian on the Gatineau side. Now Seb owns a classic car restoration shop. We filmed at his shop and we captured a story. And this was a great story to do because he had a lot of old VHS footage, much like I did myself. So this was a dream to get somebody else's story and show it on video. It was really cool to connect the past and the present, show that old footage, have him tell the stories, and have the visuals to go along with it. This is what the show was designed for, and this episode is the best representation of what this show is supposed to look like. The next significant moment was Albert and Leaf in the 1985 Pontiac Fero. Now this is a really cool episode because Albert had bought this car in the 80s and now his grandson really likes the car and they have this special connection. I think it was really awesome to be able to capture this special relationship on tape, to show the relationship between Leaf and his grandfather. This is a great memory they're gonna have forever. And the show has always been about family. So being able to capture these special moments, and I know that means a lot for people like that. Now you must get some looks driving this thing in city. Yeah, well, well, people now because they don't see this. This car isn't around anymore, you know? Something that happened this year that I didn't expect was that amazing burnout that Pat did. Now Pat's got a really cool ride. This is a very unique vehicle. This is the first right-hand drive car we did on the show. And Pat had a great story of how he got it and his whole journey. But one thing he did that I didn't expect was the burnout that he pulled off. This thing was insane. I was not expecting this. I was so blown away that I couldn't even film it properly. This is one of the coolest moments of the season. This is one of those real badass moments. So special wow. shout out to Pat for doing that <laughs> burnout. That was really that's something that awesome, some dude. skill. So he did an awesome job, man. That's, that's an awesome moment for sure. Another person we had on the show was a good friend of mine, Nick. Now, unfortunately, years ago, Nick's father had passed away and we wanted to do the special episode on his old 442, but it was in the restoration process and it just wasn't ready to go. So we did an episode on Nick's first vehicle, his Eldorado. Now, we didn't have all the old footage and many, many years of history, like some of the other cars we've done, but something happened during this episode that was really special. He drove this car quite a few times too. He always liked borrowing it. So uh, yeah, it's just another another memory of him. So another right. reason that I'll, I'll probably never sell it. At one point, Nick was talking about his father and he was driving. And when we were driving there, I felt like we were not alone. Like I felt like someone was there with us. And then I started editing this episode. I was going through the footage and there was this one shot where when he was talking about his father, the light started glaring in a really unique way. And I had never seen this in any of the episodes before or after since I filmed this. If you look at it, it, it just might be luck, but when he was talking, I felt like his dad was right there. Like that was such a cool moment. It was just really intense. Even thinking about now, like I'm getting chills because I felt like there was something significant happening there. And I'm really excited that we're able to do his car next year. So we will be doing the 442 on the next season. So that story will be shared. Uh, it's a very special car. But on the subject of heartfelt tributes, none were more impressive than Randy's 1985 CL9000. Not only did Randy purchase a derelict truck for $1,000 that most people will run and hide from, he actually restored it. It took him 12 years to do this amazing project. Let's do this. I didn't see the truck because I wasn't driving all the way out to Manitoba to look at a $1,000 truck. Was it running? No. When I first seen it, I just about cried because the doors were seized. Absolutely nothing worked. And I said to my dad, I think I made a big mistake. And he said, no, you're going to do it. My dad came over just when I first got it 
the wheels on it, I bought new tires and put them on and I moved it for the first time. And he was there a week before okay. and passed away a week after and I never got to take him for a ride in it. Uh, so in the form of a tribute, Randy dedicated this truck to his father Boyd. Now this story is a true Rocky story. He had no experience doing this. It took him 12 years. All these skills he didn't have, did it all by himself. What he did here was truly remarkable. And the best part about this is this is one of the early episodes. It ended up going online and going completely viral. Within a week, it had 100,000 views. This story touched so many people. I could not believe the comments. Massive stories, people reminiscing, a lot of old timers looking back at times they had with their trucks. So not only was this a huge achievement for Randy, but this was a huge achievement for us. This is why the show was created. I could not be more proud than with this episode of the CL9000. Another great achievement to be able to do was share the story of my Jeep. Now this was the very first full episode that we went to where we talked about the story. This is where I shared my own story. This car is very special to me and it's why I understand other people's stories because the significance it has in my life. Now this is something that took 17 years to restore. This is something I spent a lot of time with my dad and this is the one thing we, we still kind of have in common that we were able to do at the time. So these are some special moments. It was great to have them on camera and share them with everybody. And that's what the show is all about. Joe's Boneyard, this place was something else. This is something we stumbled upon, not for the show itself, but a spin-off show we created while filming this. Doing the show, I've met a lot of amazing people with incredible stories, and it's inspired me to do a dream of mine, and that's to build a muscle car. And I started looking for a 1968 to 1972 Chevy Nova. And I found this Boneyard with 400 classic cars that are just derelict, just lying around. Being able to visit this place and go back in time, this was incredible. Absolutely my favorite shoot of all time, being able to see all these old cars and think about what kind of stories they might have, look at the condition everything, it was really intense. And being able to get these shots and preserve them on camera forever, I just think that's the next step, that's really amazing. You know, this place is created to preserve the past, so I got very attached to it, being a nostalgic person, doing this show, this is like, this is what it's all about. This is something someone else did to preserve the past and I was able to film it. It's just a coming together of worlds and really special thing. So we're really thankful that Joe was able to let us do this, let us film over there, because it's not a public place for videographers. Much like myself, my son Lex got obsessed with the rally. At one point, it was the only thing he was watching. He would watch it more than cartoons. He'd always say, cars, and he wanted to watch the rally cars. So I decided to take him to the rally of the Tall Pines. So this year we went to the rally, I took my wife. We also went with her brother and her dad who had never been to a rally. This was a really special moment we were able to do. It was really nice to bring the family, show them something they had never seen before and introduce rally to a new generation of fans. The next story is much like the show, it's a lifelong passion. A good friend of mine, Pat, had known him since elementary school. As a little guy, all I remember him talking about is Corvettes. He always wanted the Stingray Corvette. One day, I'm good, Max, I'm gonna get my vet, I'm gonna get my vet. So what happened? All these years later, he got his Corvette. He made his dream come true. He took an old car, he fixed it, he sold it, and then he bought his dream car with it. And even from there, he's not finished. You know, he's swapping parts, he's gonna swap the engine. I just think it's really inspiring what he's able to do and I'm so proud of him for being able to not only do this but to achieve his dream. You know, he had that goal his whole life, all these years and he was able to achieve it. That's a true story of Between the Wheels. So that brings us to number one, my favorite moment of all time and that's filming in the Bronco episode. This Bronco episode was not meant to be a big history lesson because I had just got this car and had no history. But in order to get here, in order to get the Bronco, it was a big journey. It's not just something that happened overnight. This is, this car was purchased from a lifelong of working hard, setting goals, following those goals, and following through those goals. That's what the Bronco represented. 
And throughout that whole journey, there was a lot of people that didn't believe in a lot of my goals. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. It doesn't really matter. There was always one person in my life that's motivated me to go after my dreams. She has never doubted anything I've ever thought of in the past. She's only motivated me, and that's my grandmother. My grandmother, Christina, has been my life since I was a little kid. I spent more time with her than I did my own parents. She lived with us, and she took care of us as kids, and she was always a big part of my life. And she's always supported anything I've ever wanted to do in my life. And I lived most of my life with her, so she saw a lot of the struggles I went through, the long hours, how much it would take out of me. And a lot of people, you know, would, would tell me, don't do that, don't work on this, you're not making money. A lot of people would shut me down. And it, it, it was easy to, to, to just give up one day. But she was always one that believed in me. So having that motivation was really important to me. So when this show came about and I said, I'm going after my dreams, and I told her about it, um, the one thing I wanted to do was, was take her for a ride. But before I could do that, early 2021, she had an aneurysm and ended up in the hospital. This was absolutely the most difficult time in my life because all of a sudden life and death situations were right in front of me. They gave her surgery and they said her chances of survival were very low. I remember being with her almost every day. It was either my brother or myself. Every day we'd switch. One of us would leave, another one would come back just to give her that motivation to keep going. And there were some really rough times and we thought we'd lose her. The doctors didn't think she had much of a chance to make it. But the thing is, she pulled through. And when she came out of the hospital in April, I remember driving up with the Bronco, big smile on my face, was finally able to take her for a ride and show her what her motivation did. That pushing me to new limits and never giving up on my dreams, this is what it created. This is my favorite memory of all time. There's nothing that will ever top that. Where's Lex? Close the door.